1,000 meters, a, a lifetime best at that distance earlier this season at Peyton Jordan. Riley Masters continues to get it done. Lifetime best at 13-16. Tom Farrell in the field, an Olympian in Rio at 5,000 who's run 13-10. So it goes on and on in this field. But Grant Fisher and Woody right, Kincaid, the they are at the top of the billing. Well, and again, it's a number of folks uh, in the mix for it. Another Nike Bowerman Track Club athlete who has the stadium record here in the 5K. That's Evan Jager uh, with his run of 13:24.77 that came at the 2018 Brian Clay Invitational. As the uh, BTC had a number of quality athletes there. Again, you see Centrowitz is going to be helping out with that pacing. Uh, but we will get you all of the starters here in the Hyper Ice Men's 5K. It's Brian Schrader of 10 Man Elite in one. Mark Scott, Bowerman Track Club in two. Bia Simbasa of, the, of Nike and the American Distance Project in three. Jeff Theus of Tim and Elite in four. Aaron Templeton competing unattached in five. Connor Winter of Tim and Elite in six. Connor Clark competing unattached in seven. Darius Terry of the Hoka Aggies in eight. Hassan Mead, who you mentioned, of Nike OTC Elite in nine. Dylan Maggard, Brooks Beast goes in 10. John Renewicki of Arizona State in 11. Lowy LaLang, formerly of Arizona, now running with that great U.S. Army WCAP group out there in Colorado. He goes in 12. Leonard Career, his teammate in 13. Hassan Abdi of Oklahoma State in 14. Tetsuya Yurazaka in 15. Tommy Curtin of Saucony goes in 16. Sam Atkin competing unattached in 17. David Elliott competing unattached in 18. Lopez Lamont, who we mentioned, also of the Nike Bowerman Track Club, goes in 19. Matthew Crow, Track Club LA in 20. Woody Kincaid of the Bowerman Track Club, 21. Grant Fisher, himself a sub four minute high school miler, goes in 22. Daniel Estrada of the Mexico team goes in 23. Zuhair Talbi competing unattached in 24. Tom Farrell, the Olympian, in 25, running here with the Nike OTC Elite. Riley Masters, again a familiar name uh, on the American circuit, running for Nike, goes in 26. Hayuga Endo of Sumitomo Electric with hip number 27. Dylan Marks competing unattached, 28. Reed Fisher of Tim and Elite. In 29, Reed Buchanan of the Mammoth Track Club in 30, and Christopher Ali of Tunbridge Athletics Club in 31, and helping out with the pacing, Matt Centritz, again for the Nike Bowerman Track Club with hip number 32. Give me a breather here, Kevin. You got it. I'm seeing Lenny Career in the top six. I failed to mention the, the Rio Olympian at 10,000 meters, always tough. A guy that could win this race, comes in with a lifetime best of 13.15. But Lenny Career, I see Lowy Lelang in fourth, Kincaid in fifth, Career in sixth. Grant Fisher sits in tenth. Also inching towards the front in green, Hassan Mead with Lopez Lamont on his outside. You gotta love that Lopez rocks his sunglasses at night. Yeah, I gotta. I I think Lopez should continue at ten thousand meters. Like I think he can make multiple teams the next three years. He can make the team at ten thousand meters without injury because the races are somewhat tactical at nationals. Unless somebody's gonna bring it and run twenty seven twenty pace, Lopez is gonna contend. So he he's a guy that can continue to make teams and should stay on the track. At 34 years of age, Lopez Lamont doesn't have the same spring in his step that he did when he made the 2008 Olympic team at 1,500 meters, but that speed does not completely disappear. And you can see just by looking at him just how strong of a runner he is and, and how long he's been around. Uh, just so impressed. Of course, a disappointment in the 2016 Olympic trials, but again, a two-time Olympian for the U.S. And uh, I agree. I mean, I think he's in the mix there. And you see the Army jerseys of, of Lowy Lelang and that familiar stride that really has been missing the last few years. I mean, he was just such a, a tour de force when he was at Arizona and running that 13 flat over the summer. And uh, I mean, it's good to see him back in the mix. It'd be even better to see him back at the 13 flat, possibly sub 13 range that, you know, we kind of don't have a, a ton of those guys here at the U.S. Yeah, I mean, he, if the world standard is 2740 and for, for Lopez, he's, he ran 
an easy 28-20 a year ago. He might have to get after it a little bit at Stanford and get the mark, but that's totally doable. I mean, he can't have it. He doesn't have it for this year, but moving forward, like getting getting the mark at 10,000 meters is doable. Well, you get the mark, and like you said, if, you're, if your hat's in the ring, I, I agree. I think that uh, Lopez could be in the mix in a tactical 10K. As we see it uh, starting to string out a little bit, I'm a little surprised. You see Centro there back in, what, 10th or 11th. So maybe he's not helping out with pacing. Maybe he's just getting a little extra work in. So 27-28 would be the, is the Olympic standard for 10,000. For most, a lot of these guys are going to be shooting for that. You know, you think three or four out of the top eight in this race with with Carrera, Lelang, uh, Mead, and Lamong, that's a mark that they're going to have interest in in a year. See Schrader steps off the track. So this so this race matters not only for tonight, but moving forward, you know, the, the 2020 Olympic 10K team could be among your top five in this race. So right now it's WCAP U.S. Army teammates of Leonard Career and Lowie Lelang in the front. Neither of them afraid to push the pace. And there is Hassan Mead in third and Lopez Lamong in fourth. No big surprises there. We're missing Grant up front. That might be a bit of a surprise. He ran that 13.29, which many people thought was not indicative of his fitness. So we'll see if he can uh, prove that a little bit better. Now there, there you see him bobbing behind Estrada there. It looks like Grant Fisher is kind of tucked in behind Centro. Centro is his guide. Might be a personal pacer, huh? So it's still Career and Lowy Lelang, and they look to be trading laps up front. Hassan Mead just been around, just always around. He's just always there. He's always, always in the mix. As is Lopez, and again, no surprise with those top four there. Leonard Career with a 13-15 personal best over 5K. That came all the way back in 2013. Dylan Maggart up on the outside. Brooks Bees, formerly of Utah State, so in 13-30. Atkin as well, staying in the mix. And uh, you see a little bit of tripping up. You like to see him string a little bit further out as Lowey starting to push pace along with Maggard there. Again, they're shooting. For that 13.22 at least, 13.22.5 is the world standard. LeBong is wearing hip number, again, he's hip number 19, he's right here in the front. Hip 13 is Leonard Career. Hip 12 is Lowey. So everybody's still in it. I mean, all the major players within striking distance. It's a little surprising that it hasn't strung out a tad more. We come through. 8.11. 11 or so. With five to go. You're right, Centro and uh, Fisher still just hanging out together, and I guess that's the benefit of being on a team, I suppose, having the Olympic champion on your team. We've seen even a couple years ago at the Brian Clay meet uh, with Lopez Lamong helping out pacing and Evan Jager in that uh, 5K where he currently owns the stadium record at 1324.77. But you have to wonder, these four or five, six in the front, I mean, it looks a little strung out, but it's really not. It's two by two. We've got a uh, Moses 5K going on here. Yeah, it just, it just is a bit slow, but a lot of these guys are ready to burst. I think it's coming up here in the final four laps in the final mile as Lowy Lelang still looking smooth, looking comfortable. So does Meade. A little bit of that side-to-side -side rocking motion. Lopez Lamong always looking so strong as uh, Career gets a little tripped up there. And that's the danger in something like this where everybody's kind of chomping at the bit. You wonder if somebody's not just going to burst out front as you see. So that who's the, that pushing up now? The world standard is doable. They were at about 918, 919 
So it's reasonable for somebody to go 402 off of this pace, even though that sounds really fast, 402, 403, because they're just not running real fast right now. They so better pick it up soon, though. And that would include Grant Fisher. I can see Riley Masters part of this group. But, yeah, a lot of guys are not going to hit that standard based on the way that this race is going. Kincaid as well on the red of Bowerman Track Club moving up, and there comes Lopez also. you got to wonder on the front side, I mean, it becomes a, a pacing game on the front side. Nobody's really wanted to take the lead away from Lowey early on. Lowey and uh, his teammate Career were swapping laps, but there's too many people up front. There's there's five, six guys all within, I say striking distance, but but striking distance of of each other as well. It's easy to get tripped up in something like this. Three laps to go, and there's really no separation, not even strung out. Hassan Mee just been sitting on the shoulder of Lowey. Woody Kincaid looks to be a little bit itchy now, but he doesn't want to have to go too wide either. And you see the, just the stampeding herd coming down that back stretch. Looking at it straight on is, is uh, really give you, gives you an indicative. There you go, an indication of how bunched up they are. So you'd like to see this not turn into a 400 meter race. I mean, these guys, it's not a, a slow pace, but it's not what they were looking for. And again, that bunched up with two and a half laps to go, or just on, oh, just over two laps to go. It kind of tells you the whole story. Now Meade making a move to take it out in front. So I think that the standard is completely out the window now. So I don't know what everybody's waiting around for, but. Two to go, you have to think they're gonna start pushing it now, 11.29 or so on the clock with two remaining. That was about 65 on the last lap. So Hassan Mead, formerly of the University of Minnesota, has had a great career, just kind of always been there or thereabouts. Lopez Lamont in second again, the two-time Olympian. His career not over yet. Now here comes Grant Fisher. We see those bright red jerseys of the Bowerman Track Club, Maggard, and the neon of the Brooks Beasts also in the mix. Lowey not out of it yet. A U.S. Army WCAP jersey, but boy does Lopez look strong. Yeah, Dylan Margaret looks pretty good too. He's right there, so does Grant Fisher. But Grant needs to be in a little bit closer contact if he's gonna expect to chase these guys down. Well, Hassan Mead not gonna be completely known for his finishing Hassan speed. Mead. Wouldn't surprise me to see him getting past her on this last lap as it's finally stringing out now. It's Mead, Lamong at 12.30. 65-1 on the last lap. It's Meade, Lamong, and we just talked about it. And is the uh, kick of Lamong gone yet? I don't think it is. He moves into first. 300 to go. That distinctive look, that distinctive stride of Lopez Lamong. We've seen it for over a decade at every distance. And Hassan Meade not giving up yet. The strong. They're rolling, 28 on the last 200. The strong, long stride of Hassan Mead trying to battle with the muscular stride of Lopez Lamont. The 1500 meter Olympian in 2008 is not gonna give it up. Look at that stride, the Bowerman Track Club, red jersey, and the strength and speed of Lopez Lamont will take him home to the victory here at the inaugural 2019 Sunset Tour meet. Takes that one from Hassan Mead. 13.25, 13, your winning time. Hassan Mead, 13.27, 71. Did a lot of the work there towards the end. And a uh, fast couple of finishers towards the end. Woody Kincaid was a little itchy there. You think he might have wanted to go a little earlier. 13.28.83 for him. Grant Fisher, 13.29.03. So he lands right at about that same spot uh, as he Gets a, a new PB, but just by about half a second does just does uh, Grant Fisher. And the stadium record stays with the Bowerman Track Club because it doesn't get broken today. So Lopez closed in about 55, looked really good, and complete control. <laughs> he's he's uh, longing for another, another visit in the USA jersey. Yeah, Lopez Lamont is not done yet. You see the smile there, he knows it. That was an incredible last lap. And you have to think he can do that off a quicker pace as well. I mean, boy, he looked comfortable and he's got a little bit of energy left here as he pumps up the crowd. Uh, but I mean, that's, again, keeping an eye on that standard, but 
at the end of the day, you got to race. Yeah, and, and he, he did that for sure. So fine racing by Lopez. I would say Dylan Maggart and Grant Fisher also looked good. So Maggart just off of his lifetime best. Riley Masters always in the mix, runs 13.29.50. So good to see Kincaid back in the game, 13.28. So it is Lopez Lamong, the winner of your 2019 Hyper Ice Men's 5,000 meters here at the Sunset Tour meet. Well, just a couple of uh, events remaining. The women's 5,000 meters, of course, and a number of storylines there as well. And then we'll be doing a mixed 10,000 meters.